God called me to do this presentation on Parkinson's disease, a subject that happens to be very personal to Rick and I, as you know. Rick was diagnosed with PD in 2009. I'm going to open up my heart and give you a glimpse inside this disease. Please bear with me if I have some trouble getting through this from time to time. One of the hardest things you will ever do is grieve the loss of someone who is still alive. Next slide. <clears throat> Parkinson's is a progressive disease of the central nervous system with no cure. Nerve cell damage in the midbrain causes dopamine levels to drop, leading to symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Dopamine is the chemical in the brain that allows us to control our movements. Imagine waking up one morning and your hand is shaking and you can't make it stop. Then you're diagnosed with Parkinson's disease and you learn this is just the beginning. Can you see yourself wanting to walk but not being able to pick up your feet? Because, as Rick has described it to me, they feel like they weigh 100 pounds each. Or maybe you need to go to the restroom and you can't get up from your chair. Try as hard as you can, tell your body to stand, and nothing happens. Perhaps you want to get out of bed, but you can't make your body roll over and sit up. Now, you want to eat, but your hand won't pick up your sandwich. Think about sitting with a group of people, hearing the conversation, and you're unable to speak. Can you imagine living like this day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, with the knowledge you will continue to get worse? Just as you adjust to one issue, another crops up, then another, then another. Imagine. Next slide. Men are one and a half to two times more likely to have Parkinson's disease than women. Nearly one million people in the U.S. are living with PD, and as many as 60,000 cases are diagnosed each year. Average age at diagnosis is 60 to 62. However, symptoms such as a loss of smell and or chronic constipation are often overlooked for several years before a tremor begins, delaying diagnosis and treatment. <clears throat> the exact cause is unknown, but exposure to toxins such as pesticides and herbicides are thought to be one reason, and genetics can play a role as well. Although extremely rare, juvenile Parkinsonism has been diagnosed in children as young as two. Young onset Parkinson's is on the rise and is defined as being diagnosed before age 40 and is believed to be genetic rather than caused by external factors. The same is true for the juvenile form. Medicine can help control the symptoms but cannot stop or even slow down the progression. The side effects of the medication include hallucinations, compulsive behavior, confusion, depression, thoughts of suicide, and involuntary movements called dyskinesias, to name a few. These medications are extremely expensive if there is no insurance, or if the insurance denies the prescribed medicine, or in some cases the copay is very high. It can cost hundreds, even thousands of dollars a month. The family is financially devastated. Medical equipment needed to lift, transport, and care for the PD sufferer is very costly. And these aren't luxuries. These are essential in giving proper care. All of the money spent, all of the doses of medication throughout the day, and yet no cure, no remission, no relief of all of the symptoms ever, and the terrible side effects the medications themselves cause. Parkinson's disease is not fatal. However, complications such as choking or falling can lead to death. It is said that people with Parkinson's don't die of it, they die with it. Life expectancy for someone with PD who receives proper treatment is about the same as for the rest of the population. Next slide. <clears throat> People with Parkinson's may experience any or all of the following. Often the first symptom that leads to a Parkinson's diagnosis is a tremor in one hand that can occur at rest or in motion and may eventually be seen in all of the extremities. Other symptoms are slow movement, stiffness, loss of balance, difficulty standing and moving, unintentional writhing, muscle rigidity, problems with coordination, slow bodily movement, a slow shuffling gait and stooped posture, sleep disorders such as early awakening, nightmares, restless sleep, or sleep disturbances such as sleep apnea, fatigue, dizziness, poor balance, and restlessness. Cognitive issues such as amnesia, confusion, dementia, which occurs in about two-thirds of people with Parkinson's, difficulty thinking and understanding, or the inability to respond when spoken to, speaking difficulties, mood swings, anxiety, apathy, depression, a disordered sense of smell or loss of smell, 
urinary issues. Also common are blank stare, constipation, excessive sleepiness, jaw stiffness, difficulty swallowing, drooling, falling, limping, neck tightness, small handwriting, and weight loss. As you can see, Parkinson's disease is far more than just shaking and trembling. Next slide. <clears throat> Parkinson's disease takes the patient's independence, dignity, mobility, personality, memories, everything that makes them who they are. They become a shell of the person they once were. Imagine with me again, but this time you're the caregiver. It's the middle of the night and you are sound asleep. Suddenly you're startled awake by the sound of your spouse yelling for help. He or she has fallen out of bed and can't get up. You try with all your strength to get them off the floor, but you aren't strong enough to lift them. You push and pull, but you've made no progress. Can you feel the tears of exhaustion, frustration, and fear running down your face? Maybe you're just sitting watching TV and you see your spouse in the chair, body twisting and turning, face grimacing, head turning from side to side, jaw clenching, and you're both helpless to stop it. Now you're in the living room and your spouse is in the bedroom. <clears throat> you hear him or her talking. You know no one else is in the house. <clears throat> Excuse me. You go check and he or she is talking to someone who isn't there. You ask who they're talking to and they point at thin air and say someone's name. Now you're in a parking lot waiting for your spouse to get in the car and they're not moving. He or she can't lift their leg to step into the car. You try to lift it for them but it feels like it's stuck in cement. Everyone around you is staring. You're thinking to yourself that the simplest, most mundane activities have become such a major ordeal. You feel the anger and resentment building. Followed by the guilt at feeling that way. After all, it's not their fault, but that is how you feel nonetheless. Or one morning you wake up and your spouse looks at you and says, I don't know who you are, but I'm married. You need to get out of my bed. Imagine. Family and friends start to pull away. You realize invitations to dinner, movies, birthday parties, and other social events have stopped coming. <clears throat> People decline when asked to come to your house for a visit. No one knows what to say or how to react to either the caregiver or the one with PD. Loneliness and isolation take a huge toll on both parties. Because Parkinson's affects the voice and speech, it is easier to avoid conversations. Extended family and friends find it easier to bury their heads in the sand rather than face the reality of the disease and the effect that it is having on their friend or father, grandfather, brother, uncle, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, etc. The few who do stay involved have to stand by and watch their loved one disappear bit by bit. <clears throat> They have to see their friend or family member suffer and struggle with no hope things will ever get better and live with the fact they will only continue to get worse until they die. The caregivers must give up their life to care for their ailing loved one who will eventually get to the point that someone must be with them 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. It will become their responsibility to dress, bathe, brush teeth and hair, shave, feed, lift onto chairs or the toilet or into bed. In fact, Everything one normally does for themselves, they will have to do for their patient. And make no mistake, when giving this level of care, they are your patient. Your familial titles fade into caregiver. It becomes your entire life. It becomes who and what you are. I've read studies that say between 30 and 45% of family caregivers will pass away before the person they are caring for. This is not strictly Parkinson's disease, but all family caregivers. Next slide. <clears throat> I've heard my whole life, God won't give you more than you can handle. <clears throat> and while this quote is not in scripture, it always gave me comfort. After all, in Philippians 4.13, the Bible tells us, I can do th all things through Christ who strengthens me. In the Old Testament from Jeremiah 29.11, we are told, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to po prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. In the hard times of my life where I couldn't understand how something could possibly have a good ending, I could always believe God has this and I'll be all right. But this disease has put my faith to what I perceive as the ultimate test. To be perfectly honest, I am angry at God. <laughs> 
How can he let this happen? Why? The only thing we can look forward to is the promise of heaven. No more pain, no more suffering. Let me say, though, that is extremely hard to hold on to when you're living this nightmare. I am not diminishing in any way the caregivers of any other disease. I believe each incapacitating disease brings with it a unique set of adversity that only those living with it can understand. In closing, I would like to say, for those of us who are Parkinson's caregivers, the hardest thing, aside from the obvious, watching the torture this disease inflicts on our loved ones suffering with it, is our inability to convey and make friends and family understand just what we are feeling. It is a need I can't explain. It is a need I can almost touch and feel and see. It is a need that is as strong as that to eat and drink, but it is unobtainable. No matter how much those of you on the outside of this disease care for us, no matter how sincere you are, no matter how hard you try, you will never be able to grasp what we are truly going through. Until you're faced with an incurable, long-term, progressive disease that literally leaves no room for hope, where the only end is in the death of someone you love, you can't know how we feel. The guilt of thinking I just want this to end and the realization your essence wishing they would die, but you don't want them to die. So how can you wish for it to end? So please don't say something like things will get better because the fact is they won't. Or I know how you feel because unless you've walked in our shoes, you can't. Hearing that to us feels dismissive of the pain that we have to live with. Instead, as many of you have already done, say a prayer with us, offer your help, or even just ask us out for a cup of coffee. Thank you for your attention. My prayer is that you've all learned something more about this disease.